What's up, dude? Are you excited that you have a shirt made after you? Dude, your face is on a t-shirt. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Got kind of a different video in store for you guys today, something that I've gotten a lot of questions about over the years, and that is in regards to my boat. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Actually, just coming off a guide trip this morning, had my first day back to work in like almost 20 days or something like that. Like you guys saw in my last video, I went out to one of the power plant lakes, broke up all the ice at the boat ramp so I could come out the following day to pre-fish for today's guide trip. I did film, but it's just really not the video that I want to put out. I'm just going to drop like a one minute montage of those catches from that morning that I was there the next day. Not really the day that you want to be on that lake with high bluebird skies and no wind and a ton of pressure because I'm pretty sure like 40 of you guys saw that video and then came out to fish the following day. I'm kind of regretting posting that when I did. But anyway, here's a short like one minute montage of those catches right now. Hey guys, I have a fish on. Oh God. That's dickhead. Hope that's not a sign of what's to come. First fish of the day. Dirty old white bass. Fat guy. Another one. Got him. Who is it? Another freaking drum. Should have brought beer. Oh God, it's the drum extravaganza. Another white bass on a bottom bait. Please don't be a drum. Today sucked. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, nothing really too exciting. I probably could have made some sort of video from it, but not really the content that I want to put out on this channel. But the good thing is that my first guide trip after 20 days of not guiding today on that same lake was absolutely spectacular. Had a couple huge catches right off the bat. So if you guys don't follow me on Facebook or Instagram, definitely go and do that and go check out those fish right now. But yeah, like I was saying before, one of the questions that I get a lot on this channel is questions in regards to my boat. So I'm gonna do a full boat walkthrough right now. Just kind of go over my setup, what the boat is, all the changes that my boats have gone through, all the electronics, the trolling motors, but everything that I've got right now on the boat. Cause I don't know, some people just like seeing what other guys are working with. So without further ado, let's get in and talk about my Alumacraft 175 Magnum CS. This boat is a 2003 Alumacraft Magnum 175 CS. This boat is 17 foot, 15 inches long. So we're just gonna go ahead and call that an 18 foot boat. This Alumacraft is powered by my all-time favorite engine, most bulletproof engine I've ever owned, the Yamaha 115 four-stroke. This motor is also 2003. Now, when I first bought this boat, it did come with a matching 9.9 kicker that was mounted right there. I did end up selling that kicker about a year and a half, two years ago. I never really used it that much, even for trolling. I feel like my bow mount can get me up to the speeds that I want. But that being said, this 115 does troll down really, really nicely. Strong, strong, solid chance that even someday when I upgrade from this boat, I will still try and choose another boat that is powered by a Yamaha four stroke because this has been absolutely bulletproof. Never had one issue with this motor. I think the only thing that I've ever done to this thing was replace the throttle cables when I broke them last year, the year before or something like that. But owning a Yamaha four stroke like this or any four stroke is pretty much just like owning your car. Routine maintenance, oil changes, lower unit gear lube, oil filter, stuff like that. That's pretty much all you have to do. The one thing about this boat that I really do love is it is on a roller trailer. I've had a roller trailer in the past with one of my old boats and the rollers were just off a little bit. I could never get it centered just right, but this boat came absolutely perfect when I bought it used. I can get this boat in and out of super, super skinny water, especially at that one power plant lake that we've been fishing. Super shallow ramp, so the roller trailer really helps. I really do like that. Some guys don't really like it. They prefer the bunk trailers, but this one has got me sold on having a roller trailer. But yeah, this is my fourth boat that I've had in all of my life the third Alumacraft. I will always own an Alumacraft. Always been super solid. And this Alumacraft in particular is just absolutely perfect. Like I said, 18 foot long. It's got an 88 inch beam width. So it's super nice and wide. It's got the wide gunnels that you can see here, which is super nice for stability. Just stand up there. I like to stand up there. Customers don't really like to stand up there. These gunnels aren't terribly wide. You know, they're just a little bit. My hand's just a little bit wider than them. Some of the Alumacrafts now, all the new boats come with 96 inch beams, but the 
wide gunnels are like a foot wide, so it does kind of take away from how much width you have in the boat. Something else that I did add in the interest of my girlfriend or anyone who just falls off the boat potentially and has a hard time getting in, we did add this nice swim platform right here a year or two ago. It's got three-step telescoping ladder that pops out. So that is really nice to have. I like to consider myself pretty agile and able to hop myself up over the gunnels of the boat. But once I put the swim ladder in, I did not regret it. So that's a hundred or some $120 upgrade that I very highly recommend for a boat this size also. But yeah, let's just hop in here and just kind of go through the whole thing. This boat's rated up to five people. I fished five people. I fished six people. Super, super stable. You can stand on one side. The whole thing barely moved. Plenty of room for people. And again, just so, so stable. That's something that I cannot stress enough about when buying a boat is make sure that the boat is stable. There's nothing worse than having a tippy boat. A lot of you guys over the years or months or however long you've been following this channel have commented on my trolling motor situation. I am running a 24 volt, 80 pound thrust Minn Kota Tarova with a 60 inch shaft. I had an Altera before, had nothing but problems with it in less than a month of owning it. And I got rid of that, went straight back to the Tarova, never giving me any issues. And I guess while we're on the front deck, this is another question that I get all the time on the YouTube channel is about these cargo net situations on the front of the boat. A lot of boats nowadays actually come with those. This one did not, but I did upgrade to those. Everyone asks me where you can buy those. Just search for boat cargo net on Google and you'll find them. That one's the 40 inch version. Super nice to have those in the boat just to throw shit in. You can put them just about anywhere. They come in like two or three different sizes, but yeah, definitely an upgrade that I would recommend on your boat. And then up here, we've obviously got the Garmin Echo Map 93 SV Plus UHD on the stowaway mount right here if you guys have not seen the stowaway mount videos i'll link those down below or somewhere in here and we've got our live scope pole right here all of my live scope wires are super nice and tucked up underneath the gunnel there that run back to the console this is where my deep cycle batteries are right here we've got two right there with the onboard charger tucked away right in there real nice next compartment up we've got the most giant live well of all time. I don't think video does justice as to how big this live well actually is, but it does go to the other side over here. We've got the bait well right there, which I never use. Definitely would like to have a spacer in here because trying to fish fish out of this live well, it can kind of be a pain in the ass. And then up here, as far as our storage compartments, just more dry storage there goes all the way down. Then I got more plastics, bump board, nav light right there. A lot of room that goes all the way across this front deck here as far as storage. So I'll just kind of work our way back in the boat right here. This is where I mount my heading sensor for my Tarova in the front of the boat, wired to all the power up underneath. And then if you guys have seen my live scope videos or setup videos or install videos, this is where I mounted my black box with my DeWalt battery and sea light adapter right up in there, fire extinguisher little basket right there for handy dandy storage that actually came with the boat and then over on this side we've got technically the rod locker this fits up to like i don't know seven seven and a half maybe eight foot rods just nice to be able to put rods away in there especially with customers in the boat this right here is another upgrade that i added to the boat these did not come with a way to keep these compartment lids open so it was always a pain trying to get rods out of there and keep this up at the same time. So I added this collapsible spring system right there. Obviously you just see, flip it all the way up. It extends, stays up, collapse it to close. Don't ask me where those came from because my dad installed those when I got the boat. And then right here, the inside of the gunnel storage is also really nice to have. I've got my stern light right there, the anchor light, uh, my paddle right there, and then just can throw various random things in there. Obviously on the other side of the boat, we've got the same in gunnel storage running all the way across. This is where I keep the auto inflate life jackets for customers. That's where customers can just put their keys, wallet, phone, stuff like that on guide trips. And then right here in this compartment, this is where I keep all my boxes, plenty of room. And this one, this is actually, I think like another rod locker situation. The storage goes all the way up to the front there. And this is just where I put most of my tackle boxes for the trips or keep as much as I possibly can in there so I don't forget anything. All these compartments are lined with vinyl just like this so they do stay pretty waterproof but I do like to pop those open when I'm storing the boat just to dry anything out. Any moisture in there that might be in there. We've got oh shit bars lining the entire gunnel right here for customers to grab onto when they don't feel safe. <laughs> Have to go in and retighten these because people grab onto them pretty tight. And again same collapsible spring system on this side. Super nice to have. And then as we move to the back of the boat here, this is where my starting battery resides right here. I've got an Optima blue top powering up everything in the boat. 
uh, room for a second battery right there access all the way down here and then on this side this is actually where the live well for the back of the boat is but as you can see i've since converted that to straight up storage this live well actually is plugged or the valve is broken so i cannot drain this live well and that's why i converted it to storage but it's nice because when i'm doing all my trolling and stuff for walleyes this is where i keep all my rod holders got a couple crankbait boxes right here so this live well actually works just a little bit better as storage than an actual live well now we've got six rod holders right here these these again came with the boat when I bought it. Great place to put rods when I've got customers in the boat and just get them up out of the way. And then we've got little various tools right there. I guess I didn't really talk about the console very much, but we've got another matching Garmin 93 SV UHD here at the console. I've got the medium size Ram mount to bring this graph up right in my face here. That was a really nice upgrade. I really needed a new Ram mount there. So that's nice to have too. This boat did come with a Pioneer sound system. When I first bought this boat, it didn't really have an upgraded stereo. So I did upgrade that with a matching Pioneer, uh, get the Bluetooth link and auxiliary port and stuff like that. I love tunes on the boat. We've got the fuse panel right here. And I think that's really about it, to be honest with you. Like I said before, this is my third Alumacraft out of the four boats that I've owned in my lifetime. Definitely would not go to another rig. I love Alumacrafts so, so much. Super, super stable, awesome ride, 2XB hull system. Really just can't ask for more in a deep V boat. You know, like I said, it's 17 feet, 15 inches. We're just gonna call it 18. Perfect middle of the road boat for the Kansas lakes that I fish. If I still lived in Wisconsin, yes, I would like to have a bigger boat, potentially even a big fiberglass boat, like a Ranger or something like that. But if I had that kind of money, I'd probably just hop into a 20 foot Alumacraft with a full windshield. But yeah, this 115 Yamaha pushes me right around like 40 to 41 by myself. I can usually get 38, 39. Loaded down with customers in the boat, two or three people. Got a 17 pitch uh, Solus prop on there, a stainless prop. I don't run an aluminum prop, but I do have an extra one in there just in case. That's really all I can think of. I don't really think that I'm missing too much. I think just as I kind of look around, I did add the ram mount support for my trolling motor on the front of the boat. Not something that you really need, but I do like to have that added stability just for towing and especially running rough water. You don't want that shaft bouncing around and stuff. So spend the extra 50 or 60 bucks on some trolling motor support. But otherwise, it's a great boat. So I hope this answers some questions for you guys that have been asking me about my rig. I've never really done a boat walkthrough before. I did buy this boat used. I got really lucky uh, from a walleye boats for sale Facebook group. Saw this guy in Iowa post this boat and I was up there by the next Friday. Put a deposit down and brought this thing home. It's been a huge upgrade and asked asset to my guide service over the last two and a half, three years, I think that I've owned it now and I wouldn't change a thing. Oh, but I did forget one key feature, something that everybody should add to their boat, no matter what boat you have. You can't really see them because it's daylight, but I do have an LED strip running the entire length of the gunnel on this side of the boat as well as this side right here. It's actually hooked up to uh, my live well lights as well. So all my live wells are lit and everything. But for 30 or 40 bucks on Amazon, you cannot go wrong with some waterproof LED lights to run the length of your gunnels up underneath there just to be able to see. Plus it looks kind of cool in the morning and at night. But yeah, that's about all I've got for you guys today. So thank you for sticking around for the Alumacraft boat walkthrough. Just an FYI for all my subscribers and anyone who's new here, the lakes are on their way to being completely thawed, hopefully in the next 10 to 14 days. My entire month of March is completely booked. We've got openings in April and May if you guys wanna get out. Very much recommend trying to get out in the April, May and June months, especially for walleye. That's when the wipers and white bass start getting fired up too. So if you guys wanna book a trip, please hit the link in the description down below to go to my website. Shoot me a message on the Facebook page, shoot me an email. But if you guys wanna spot on an amazing bike, that's going to be awesome this year. Definitely give me a shout. And also cannot forget that we have merch in the merch store now. Hit that link also in the description. If you guys want to get a Kansas Angling Experience shirt, long sleeve hoodie, and one that I added just yesterday, one with Tucker's face on it. He's so excited that he's going to be a celebrity now. So that's all I've got for you guys. Thank you guys so much for sticking around for the Alumacraft walkthrough. And I will hopefully see you again soon on the water, but it's going to be busy. So please bear with me. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one.